Super Wild Card Weekend. We've got a, a Tequila Friday. Why? Because it's Marissa's birthday and Will our Jib Operator's birthday as well. Uh, we are be, we'll, we'll be joined by uh, Brandon Marshall, who will take 75 minutes of our 60 minutes to discuss whatever the hell he wants to. He is the steward of the I Am Athlete Media Empire. Plus, Sam Monson will be here. I asked him to dig up a critical number that will help you over on FanDuel Sportsbook, talking trash in the bar with your friends, whatever ahead of these six matchups. And um, I am six for six in my K-Makers. Will I get three more? Yes, I will, starting now. Brandon Marshall, I believe, standing by, but not so fast. We've got to get into this. Listen. I don't like advancing this story. It's going to be talked about, so let's um, do our best to discuss it. Uh, but in the midst of what has been a wide speculation about Lamar Jackson, his injury all week, really, he decided to take matters into his own hands, whether he decided or was advised to. I like that he did this. I think it's great that he did, and here's what he had to say. Thank you, everyone, for your support and concerns regarding my injuries. I want to give you all an update as I'm in the recovery process. I've suffered a PCL grade 2 sprain on the borderline of a strain 3. There is still inflammation surrounding my knee and my knee remains unstable. I'm still in good spirits as I continue with treatments on the road to recovery. I wish I could be out there. I'm going to repeat that. I wish I could be out there with my guys more than anything, but I can't give 100% of myself to my guys and fans. I'm still hopeful we still have a chance. So the initial diagnosis of what was going on was one to three weeks, he'll be back, he'll be back, he'll be back, and now we're about to hit the six-week mark, and it doesn't seem like he's close to returning. So uh, it has caused a lot of people, Twitter, pundits, whatever, to question, can he play through this? Or, and he is instead prioritizing his health and being extra careful with his contract situation looming, and there's you know a lot of things that are untied there, uh, or is he actually hurt and can't go? And I honestly think that this line of thinking is so toxic, and it is such a reach. I don't question Lamar Jackson's desire to play, and I can only do that based on experience that I have as a fan and as someone who's talked to these guys a lot over the years. I've covered this league for a little bit, and it seems to me it is a hardwired thing. Wanting to play... It almost seems untaught to these players. It is an inherent instinct. It is in the bones of these guys, in the DNA. And I've never met, I can say, I've never talked to or met a player who I'm not completely convinced that they wouldn't be going out there and giving 100% if they could. And most of them go out there with much less than 100% uh, available to them to give. And it's hard for me to envision that type of approach from Lamar Jackson, who has only showed us that he's willing to do anything to get out on the field and give it his all. Remember when the contract negotiations kicked off last summer? Steve Bashotti, the Ravens owner, he was saying things about how Lamar is looking at this contract money as secondary to what's really important to him. He's using the word obsessed to win a Super Bowl. Uh, so while I think it would be nice to see Bashadi and the GM, DaCosta, and of course Harbaugh, his coach, you want to always hear the coach say stuff about this, I would love to hear them come out in further support and maybe more meaningful support of Lamar ahead of this game. But this isn't really a story. If he could play, he would. And if he was sweating his contract and second-guessing getting on the field, I don't think we'd see him out there week one. Why would we? We wouldn't see him at all. And if you think about it, if he could play, go out there, beat his division rival, somebody who smoked you twice this year, or at least got past you twice, advance his team further into the playoffs. Doesn't everyone out there making these claims or having these thoughts understand that that just adds to his value? Why wouldn't he want to go out there? He's always bet on himself. Why would that stop now in this situation? It doesn't seem likely to me. It doesn't seem likely we'll see him based on what he's saying and what this injury really is. So let's do what RG3 said, and RG3 can speak to this. Remember what happened in his rookie year. Let him recover. Let him relax. And what help? Do, what does it do for you, just as a human, to question this? Are you going to get an answer? Like, if they lose, if they win, if he plays, are you going to ever feel good? Uh, if they franchise tag him, they don't, he goes to another team, which seems likely, whatever. Like, what is questioning it right now doing for you? Like, take a nap, get a grip, and enjoy the action this week. I don't think he'll play. Um, and it doesn't sound like he's particularly close to getting back on the field if they do somehow advance past Joe Burrow and company. So it's either going to be Tyler Huntley, who returned to practice yesterday, or Anthony Brown, who was the quarterback Sunday Night Football, of course, against the AFC champs. Uh, that'll see. We'll see how that happens as we bring in Brandon Marshall, who I never know what he's going to say. 
former All-Pro, receiver, opinionated, I'm Athlete Media mogul, and Matt Hamilton, future employer. Brandon Marshall, how are you? Oh, I'm phenomenal. Um, I'm a little disappointed. I see right here it says, Up in Adams, oh. Brandon Marshall joins the show. I thought we agreed that we were going to brand our own segment. Yeah. I thought I was. I thought you were going to make me feel special. I see Gronkowski on your show, Coach Sean Payton on your show. It's like you're getting the big hit now. It's like you moved to, from New York to L.A., two big cities, yeah. major markets. You're getting the big yeah. hit. I, it's like, what's up? Are you forgetting about the small people like me? I'm not. I think you kind of curved me for like two weeks in a row. I think plenty of things happen in, in the news cycle. I, I uh, in our meetings, would say, Brenda Marshall, want to come on? Brenda Marshall want to come on? And you kind of um, curved me. So I have to say, fine, I guess I'll settle for Rob Gronkowski, four-time Super Bowl champion. Fine. What, was that a little gaslighting? For on my side, I am, I'm, I am good at that. It's in my Twitter bio. <laughs> uh, Brandon, what do you make? Let's talk Lamar here. We got lots to talk about. Six games, big stakes. What's the story? He probably won't play. What do you make of people uh, thinking he might just be holding himself out? He can't play, right? Uh, 2006, when I was drafted uh, to the Denver Broncos, fourth rounder, our, our first preseason game, uh, playing up in Indy, I fall on the sideline. And I snapped my PCL. So it was a grade two, uh, almost a grade three, similar to Lamar Jackson's. And it didn't, it took me almost to week eight to get back right. Uh, I was able to get back out there right around week six, but I wasn't the same guy. Okay. I mean, so, excuse me, six weeks out, but I wasn't mm. the same guy. I didn't feel comfortable until I hit probably halfway mark of the season. Uh, the PCL is a serious thing. It's not as serious, obviously, as a MCL, uh, and I wouldn't say MCL, like an ACL, excuse me, or a patella tendon, something like that. But you you have no stability in your knee, mm. right? You're literally talking about, you, you ever see someone, um, you know, hyperextend their knee, mm -hmm. right? It goes back. That's that PCL. You, that PCL stops your knee from going back. When you don't have that, there's literally no stability, K. But let's talk about what, not the, you know, the doctor, the operation of it all. Like, let's talk about what people are saying is that it's because of the contract. He doesn't have professional experienced representation, as far as we know. Negotiations stopped in the summer before the season kicked off. The team has not come out and said anything. Harbaugh hasn't really come out and said anything. Like, he can't play. We're saying he can't play because it's what I believe as a fan and what you believe as a former player. But what do you make of, of the right. assumption that he's doing it to protect himself because he needs a deal to get done and that's looming? Humanization, right? So that's basically what we want to talk about here. First off, you just said a lot. Uh, the first thing you talked about was the representation, right? I'm so tired of people saying that he's not represented. Um, I had one of the most powerful agents and still have one of the most powerful agents in sports. Kennard McGuire has done billions of dollars in deals, it seems like, at the general manager level. Uh, so representing managers, players, and also owners. Um, there was times when I was playing for the Chicago Bears that we leaned on the NFLPA uh, to walk us through our philosophy and our approach to our contract, right? There are so many attorneys that are already paid by the players for the players. So when you talk about representation, it, it, it's, it's not as hard as people think, right? It's about standing on what you believe in. You know, if Lamar Jackson believes he's a top five quarterback and the top five quarterback range is X, then that's where he wants to be. Or the market sets itself. If he feels like he should be right there with Patrick Mahomes or underneath, underneath Patrick Mahomes, that's what he believes, and then you do the dance. So, yeah, there there is an art and skill to negotiation. But Miss Felicia Jackson, Jackson mm -hmm. is a hell of a lady and super smart. I've sat down and talked to her and I've been begging her to let me tell her story. I've been begging her uh, to come on I Am Athlete and us highlight her. She wants to always be in the back. Hmm. When I tell you she is brilliant, she is brilliant. I actually met Lamar Jackson, Miss Felicia, back when I was playing for the Miami Dolphins in 2011. We went to the same church. I live right down here in Western Florida. They, they're from Pompano Beach. Uh, and we I would see them almost every other Sunday. Um, Lamar Jackson and Miss Felicia know exactly what they're doing, mm -hmm. okay? And as far as the humanization part of this thing, didn't we just see Lamar uh, uh, die on the field and be 
brought back to life and we started this conversation of damn maybe it's time for us to start listening to the players every time money comes in to play a contract dispute we immediately go to the owners we immediately go to the to the team side well what about Lamar Jackson what if Lamar Jackson can never play again right mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson deserves to have some stability D D Lamar Jackson deserves to have a contract right where he doesn't own all the risk that is the situation right here so if if I was Lamar, mm -hmm. right, and I wasn't even dealing with a PCL and I could play, I would not play. It's too much risk. I'm saying that right now. Wow. I would not play. You know, well, let's give some more breaking news. Okay, my last year in Denver with Josh McDaniels, you know I don't like Josh McDaniels too that. much. Josh McDaniels comes in, and he's a jerk, right? Can I say that? I can't say that. Sorry, let me not call nobody names. I can't call nobody names. I'm so sorry. But Josh McDaniels come in, and we don't have the best relationship. OK, the last year I was like 80 percent. I could have probably played through it, but I didn't. I didn't go out there. I'm not going to waste uh, going into my uh, free agency, my my offseason, uh, an opportunity to secure my family forever and, and, and risk it for you. No, I'm thinking about Z, Ziggy and Zoe that's here today. I'm thinking about their kids, kids. That's what I was thinking about. And I sat my butt down. Right there on did, the side. Why line. did you bring up Josh McDaniel when you made that decision? Like, so if, if it was a coach that you really Ooh. liked, would you have played? You, listen, uh, probably not, right? Hey, news flash NBA players, NFL players, hockey players, snowboarders, whatever it is, okay? If you're in your contract year, okay, and, and, and you're, you're, you're seconds away from getting a deal and you're not there, sit your butt down. Hey, it, hey, hey, players, if you're going into a year and you don't feel comfortable with the contract that you have, if you feel like, you know what, like if I go out there and I can tear my ACL, I can lose, I would make, maybe never play again and I'm not secure for life, sit your butt down. And why did he play week one? Because that, he was 100% then? Be, be, because that is the business, right? Because if he doesn't do that, he's deemed a bad guy. Okay, but he's tell me this. But he, he wants money. He wants security. Guaranteed money is what we're talking about. So him, he, this will be the second season in a row, the second season that he has not finished the year. Should that impact his contract negotiation? Okay, maybe. But Kay, when you were a free agent, you had FanDuel out there, you had this person out there, that person out there. You Look, whoever gave you the best deal was the deal. Yeah. So right now, if Lamar Jackson, with everything you just said, if there's one, two, three teams that come out there and say, we'll give you that $230 million guarantee, that's the market, Kay. So I understand that, but we're, we're talking about why he would make a decision like that you know, now versus he could have held out. Why didn't he just hold the out reason, then if that's what he's, if the, he has the mentality that you're saying, that I disagree with you. I don't think, I think that if he could play, he'd go play. I think he's wired reason, that way. I think he actually thinks, has a lot of confidence in himself. And I think his mother does, who I've never spoken to. I'm sure she does as well as they're handling this. And he's, he's, his, Lamar's whole thing and why I love Lamar is that he bets on himself, whether it's reckless or the right decision or it works out, it's a risk that he's willing to take, that he'll go out there and he'll play. And I can't imagine that knowing that he could go and slay the Bengals and keep going and he's going to earn himself more money, more respect in that's playing right. that he would hold himself out. I don't think that that's true. No, listen, that's 99% of the athletes out there in football or basketball is going to make the same decision Lamar Jackson made, right? And that is the problem. Right. Mm -hmm. As a player, you take it personal. As a player, you're talking about I'm going to go out there and compete and we forget about the business side. We don't have the 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 savviness, you know, when it comes to understand the bigger picture. We don't have the oomph to be able to sit there in a tough situation when you have millions of fans saying you are selfish. You're you're you should be traded. We should cut you. We don't even want you to come back. A lot of players can't deal with that. No, like 99% of the players think that way and we need to stop it and we need to change the way we think. And the reason why, because if you are a player that goes down and you deal with a season in ending injury, you're DeMar Hamlin. Yeah. And I know this was almost an wow. anomaly, but we've had players uh, break their necks. We've had players deal with two a tongue of viral out. Which is why up. I disagree with you, Brandon. I don't think that he, he would, that any player, I think players more than ever are going to feel supported in holding out. I think if, if, Lamar Jackson said, I'm not playing because I don't feel good. I don't have this contract. I wanted to sign it. I deserve this. I think he'd actually have more support than you're saying that he would get from fans, okay, okay. from people.
Okay, Kay. So, um, well, give me one example of a player holding out over the last 20 years that was supported. And, and I know I'm not trying to put you on the spot here because, like, there's so many players and you got to think about so many different scenarios. For me, my experience, Kay, from my point of view and, and Mike's, you know, what I've seen over the last 20, 30 right. years, all I see is fans saying, you're selfish. All I keep saying is, oh, how much money is, is, is enough money? I see organizations planting stories. The re, like, hey, uh, Lamar Jackson, you know, yeah, hey, yeah. Uh, if, it's coming from if, if he's 70 80 percent, he should be able to go. Why does Lamar Jack? Why do you think Lamar Jackson had to put out a tweet saying, if I wanted to, I if why. I could play, I would play. I know, right? So, so my thing is, I, I, you know, look, maybe there's an example out there where there's been a player or two that's been supported. I can't recall. I don't recall. Okay. I think Lamar is different and I think he's looked at differently by people and I think he plays right. different and I think that he is in a world of his own and I think it's really hard to lump him in with how other quarterbacks their free agency they're holding out has occurred because I do and always have considered Lamar Jackson whether it's right or wrong sort of on his own people don't know how to value him front offices sir, I don't I don't think know what to do with a player like Lamar Jackson but I, it's we can both agree it's a shame he probably won't be out there I think I just hate the conversation about whether or not he wants to be out there or whether or not he would play if he could and I don't think he can right. play and I think if he could right. play he'd be he'd be playing right yeah and I think that would be a bad decision uh Taylor flew our, 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 Fu, our yeah. amazing our uh -huh. amazing social media manager yes uh I want you to clip this and put PSA under it okay PSA and put this out on, on all of our channels okay? okay PSA PSA you ready hey players if you're going into your last year of your deal don't go okay if you're a good player okay if you're a terrible player you got to go you don't have the accolades you got to go but if you're a good player and you think you out, if you feel like you've outperformed your contract, if you feel like, you, you know, you have all the risks, meaning that if you get hurt and you can't play again, you'll never get any more contracts. Do not play. I don't care if you're going into a season. I don't care if you're dealing with an injury like Lamar Jackson and, and you, you're sitting right there at 65, 70% and their team is on the verge of going to the playoffs. They're going into the playoffs. Don't play. Don't play. Don't play. And all the fans out there, you guys may say whatever you want about me, Brandon Marshall, but I've been dealing with it my entire career. I know 70% of you guys love me and 30% of you guys hate me. And let's keep going back and forth. But players out there, this is a business. Take the emotion out of the money. Thank you, Taylor. Please clip that PSA <laughs> and underneath. And scene. We'll be back with Brandon Marshall. we got to talk Giants, Vikings. I want to get your thoughts on all that. Kenny Galladay scored a touchdown. Is he going to be important now? They didn't get Odell. Odell was tweeting yesterday. We'll get to it right here. <laughs> back with Brandon Marshall. He is here, the I Am Athlete Media Empire, the head of that. Let's talk Giants and Jets here. Let's start, my friend, with the Giants. Vikings. They didn't sign Odell like you wanted him to. I wanted him to. But right. we did We did see Kenny Galladay score his first touchdown as a Giant last yeah. week. And listen, there are fans, there's local media calling for him to get more reps as Galladay. Do you think that touchdown could get him going and be the spark that we'd hope we'd get from Odell? Because the receivers do look better with the Giants. I do. I do. Um, Kay, I, I was on a bus one time, and I saw Devin Hester. Um <gasps> In a kind of a slump, almost. He felt like he was in a slump, but Jay, Cut Jay Cuddy, who we always talk about on our show, um, our show, our segment. Um, he wrote back he to me, by the, the way. What did he say? What did he say? What I don't remember say? something. I said, come on the show, Jay. And he wrote, what show? And I just gave up and didn't write back. <laughs> of course. Yeah. But look, Jay, Jay Cut was not throwing him the ball. So he's in a little slump, and, I, and I'm getting on the bus, and I'm seeing him with his phone out watching YouTube videos of himself, wow. of old Je of old Devin Hester. And that blew my mind. This is should have been first ballot Hall of Famer Devin Hester, who pretty much is struggling with confidence. And he's fighting his butt off to get his confidence back, right? I didn't ne I never experienced that up until I got to like the Giants and the Seattle Seahawks, where I was in that similar situation. I had to find a way to get my confidence back. I don't care if you're a player or just a person out there that's an entrepreneur or we can wear whatever. When you lose your confidence, you are done. Okay, you are not competitive anymore. You can't perform. Kenny Galladay, go back to when he was in Detroit, okay? Did we not 
uh, 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 celebrate Kenny Galladay? Did we not love those big plays? He was making these plays every single week. Yeah, he was Why do fire. you think he got the $20 million? Mm -hmm. It was not a bad deal. I don't know what happened in New York, but we have not seen this. If he can come back and make plays like this, just a couple throughout this playoff race, this could be the old Giants run that we saw years ago with Eli Manning when they were terrible, and then they, all of a sudden they found their way in the Super Bowl. Well, he needs to make these plays. Yeah. And he's capable. Well, nothing makes confidence more easy than going up against the 31st-ranked pass defense in the National Football League in the Vikings, who they faced when? Week 16? And all of those receivers were putting up numbers. So it certainly can That's happen, right. and especially if Kenny is feeling himself and gaining that confidence. I love that story about Devin Hester. I just Taylor, you're going to have to cut out the Jay Cutler part. I just don't want that out on the Internet. We appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, all right, we're going to stay in New York because the Jets didn't make the playoffs. But they've, they're always in the news, as you know. They fired their offensive coordinator, Mike LaFleur. That could not have been easy for Sala to do, a good friend of his. Woody Johnson came out yesterday, and he said he is ready to open up the checkbook for a veteran quarterback. Okay. Yeah, calling the position <laughs> the missing piece. Well said, Woody. We heard yesterday Derek Carr is on the trade block. We're hearing this morning, by the way, Indy not, not interested. The Colts do not want Derek Carr. But do you think that he could be the piece here? Of course, uh, they'll say that. You know, I love Chris Ballard over there in Indy, but so they've uh, been hit or miss on these quarterbacks the last couple of years, but he'll figure it out. Um, who this could be big. First off, uh, Woody Johnson, you know, I love you. Uh, you're uh, <laughs> my buddy, but you should have opened up the checkbook for Fitzmagic, and we wouldn't have had that terrible second go. run with New York. But anyways, do it. <laughs> do it. For go Derek? get their car. Yes. Are you kidding me? Yes, yes, absolutely. He's been in this situation again uh, before, Kay. Remember Rex Ryan, that legendary defense? Yes. Darrell Revis and all those stud muffins, Bart Scott, and, 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 and all well, those we don't, amazing we don't like hogs to talk up about him. front. Yes, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but all of those amazing players on the defensive side, and what happened? They missed it on offense. Yeah. Do you think he want to experience that again? Woody Johnson winning the Super Bowl in one of the biggest cities in the world. And this guy right here, Derek Carr, I don't care about this record saying six and nine. Yeah. You know who's to blame for this six and nine record this year? Okay. Go ahead and say it. Would it be the man who wears the visor? <laughs> yeah. Josh McDaniels. <laughs> Josh McDaniels, you want to point the finger? He did the same thing when he got to Denver. My old buddy, Jay Cutler. He gets to Denver. We're oh, the number Jay two Cutler. offense. We're, we're, we're the number two offense in the whole wide world. Yeah. And guess what our buddy Josh McDaniels What did he do? do? I'm going to trade you, Jay. What are you doing? He, this is smoking Jay. Jay is in his third year. He could potentially morph into the, one of the top five quarterbacks in, in the NFL. In that altitude? Come on! In that altitude. And his first move is to trade Jay Cutler? Why do you think Jay Cutler is so, so you're, traumatized? You're not wrong. This defense this year for the Jets, fourth best defense in the National Football League. That's no joke. I mean, right. maybe it's not Darrell Rivas, Bart Scott, what you're talking about. Like, it's up there. Salah has that going. So you're saying Derek Carr, out of everybody, he's the ideal fit for this Jet squad as far as you see. Or is there another guy? I, I, listen, uh, you know, I don't trust the draft. You never know what you're going to yeah, get. Never. You know, Zach Wilson, he still has, um, you know, a, a future, right? You know, he's still young. But you got a guy like that that comes in and there's some immaturity. You you know, it takes a couple years for guys to actually morph into men and, and, and what – you know, teams drafted for. Uh, but when you have a Derek Carr guy that you know is going to be the first one in the building, the last one out, that, which is a fact, we know that. You have a guy that is, is fiery. We know that. We have a guy that can make plays. We know that. Why wouldn't you take a chance on that? We don't need Derek Carr to come in and, and be the best Derek Carr. And, and the best Derek Carr is a top 10 quarterback right. in the NFL, wow. right? We don't need that. We need Derek Carr to come in and make plays. But what you're going to get is probably a Derek Carr that could go out there and throw for 4,000 yards in the right situation. And look at that, that offense, right? You have some really good pieces on the offensive side. I like Elijah Moore. I, obviously, Wilson, he could potentially be the offensive rookie of Michael the year. Carter, you got yeah. some... Yeah, there's this some is a really good group. This is a really good group. Brees, Brees Hall coming back from injury. Great coaching. Yeah. Uh, a fiery, uh, excited fan base. Him, him in, in that media Hell, circus. I may come back tight end. Oh, God. Can I come back? As a I come back you want to come back as a tight end? If Derek Carr comes back. Comes back. If Derek Carr's back. <laughs> 
Okay. I mean, if Derek Carr goes to the Jets, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to the Jets as a tight end. Woody, give me a, a, a 10 day contract to prove it to you that I can play tight end. And here on WFAN, uh, we have Craig Carton speaking about this in about two hours. <laughs> Boomer Siason making this his fodder for the week before the weekend. Uh, him, him in front of the meet, in front of the microphones. I'm so curious about Zach Wilson. Epic fail. You, you, you won't argue me that it matters. I think he's he's emotional. He's emotional. He's going he's gonna to cry up there on that podium. I don't know if those back pages are going to be kind to him. He's an emotional guy. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. But he has like a, you know, like a mm, media relationship will be interesting, no? Yeah, but if you're winning, who cares? Winning solves everything. When you're winning, you can cry. And guess when you cry, yeah. the back page will be like, oh, my goodness. This, see, this is what we media people do. I got to put, I gotta put we, me in there yeah, as well. Yeah, that's right. That's right. This is what we do. Yeah, when they're losing and you cry, oh, that was soft. Why would you do that? You can't do that. And then when you're winning, he does that. Look at the emotional leader. No, yeah, this I'm is amazing. He it. galvanized not only the locker room, but he galvanized the city. So when you're winning, it cures all. And all of those things that uh, seems bad in front of the, the, the microphone when you're losing will be turned into good. I got to say, I did not think this conversation was going to go into you saying that Derek Carr is a Hall of Famer who you'd come out of retirement and suit up as, <laughs> at the tight end position for. I just didn't. Taylor, Taylor, didn't do not it. clip that. That is not a PSA, okay? <laughs> don't listen to your boss <laughs> over there. Do not clip that. <laughs> I don't, who's, who is Taylor's <laughs> boss? We don't know. There's no hierarchy or we don't know. Okay, let's get into these games. Playoffs. Saturday afternoon, NFC West battle. I need you to pick the game. Do you think the Niners is just that easy? They beat the Seahawks for a third time? Let's go through these quickly. Uh, okay, so the Seahawks and the Niners game, which you started with, uh, this is a blowout. Love Geno Smith and what they were able to do over there, but this is it for them. They're going fishing. Got it. I want to see. Let's pull up the full screen. I think we have it, Conrad, of all of the picks that we got from Brandon before the show. Let's take a look yeah. at those. So you already picked that. How about the Chargers? They got Jacksonville. Who did you pick? And these are your picks. Take me through them. Yeah, here you guys go, right? Uh, this is a one, two, three, four, five. This is a six-leg parlay right here. Go on FanDuel right now and make some money with me. These are locks. Take the 49ers. They're going to beat the Seahawks. You got the Chargers over the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is, could potentially be a pick em game, okay. but I think these defensive ends are going to take off. Bosa's back, baby. And then you got the Bills over the Dolphins. Come on. The Bills picked them to win a Super Bowl. I'm telling you right now, God is all around them and in them. DeMar is brought back to life and and what's happening there has galvanized the sports community the giants win big against the vikings yes kenny galladay he makes two big plays and we're going to be celebrating the giants and he's going to be lifted up as a king yes you're worth the 20 million dollars a year the Bengals over the ravens Woo! come on smoking joe no lamar jackson of course they're going to walk all over the ravens and you have the buccaneers at the cowboys do you want to bet against the GOAT. Six leg parlay. Hey, this probably, if you bet $100, you might win freaking $20,000. $20,000! Go on this, go on the app, go on the website. If you're active, especially if you're in Ohio right now, we live betting wow. right now. Gosh. <laughs> Company, man, move over, Gronkowski. Brandon Marshall's got this on lock. Hey, Kay, we appreciate Kay, it. It's the Red Bull. It's the Red Bull. It is the Red Bull. It's the Red Bull. Uh, are you mad that Jay Cutler got back to me before he got back to you? Absolutely. You know I'm mo emotional. You know I'm emotional. I'm sensitive. <laughs> uh, we love the Devin Hester story. We love, you know, using the past to sort of talk about what's going on now. And you are incredible and so insightful. And we appreciate you. Will I see you in Arizona? Yes, and we're going to do our show live. And I need a branded segment. A branded segment. Okay. What? Would, what yes, K and B. B and we'll K. work on it. Beast mode, they're saying that's, I think that that is taken. No, that's that. not. K and the no. Beast, that's not going to happen. All right, we'll talk about it, you and me. Yeah. We're, we're, these awful ideas Beauty and the Beast. No, that's too, that's too cheesy. Yeah, we're not doing that. That's too cheesy. All right, I want to get on cheesy. it. Can I get on I Am Athlete at some point? Can we, how about yes. I Am in parentheses not athlete? And then I can be part of that segment. That'll be my branded we'll, we'll, segment. We'll, we'll be out there on the 24th, I believe, the Lakers and Clippers game. So let's get you on the show then. Oh, Lakers. I've never been to a Lakers game. Well, we're not taking you to the Lakers Why? game, but you're coming to the show. All right. <laughs> Brandon Marshall, everybody, we appreciate you. We'll get your picks up online. And uh, Taylor, get to work. Get to work. Cl clip right. up those right. things. Cl we got Sam Monson coming up on the show. We're drinking tequila today, Sam. Nope. Go get, go get something a little harder. Nope. When you saw the matchup against mm -hmm. the Chargers, where you spent, my friend, the first four mm -hmm. seasons of your career, what were you thinking? And do you think it'll be emotional going up against your old squad? 
there's, there's no, I mean, it just is what it is. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a jag now, so um, hey, yeah, they let me go. I was there. It is what it is. I have history with the team, but man, I'm, I'm looking to you know go out there and dominate. But to have it be the Chargers is, you know, it, it's a little, it's, you know, it's a little more adds a little more something to it. I could not have fallen more in love with Rayshon Jenkins. The, he is so smiley, and he's not on Twitter, and I'm so upset about it because he was he would be a master subtweeter. He was just sh taking shots at Urban Meyer by not saying Urban Meyer in a way that a master class could be taught by Rayshon Jenkins, uh, the J villain who's taken on his former squad, the Chargers, in wild card action. Okay, it is Friday. Let's welcome in our good friend, the co-host of the PFF NFL podcast, PFF's lead NFL analyst, and someone who I frankly don't think tweets enough. Sam Monson, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. Okay, so this weekend, or for this this segment, we are not drinking mimosas, which would be like a totally normal thing to do. Instead, it's Marissa's birthday, so tequila is happening. And what would you what would you call this drink? Uh, tequila screwdriver. A tequila screwdriver. <laughs> Sam, what do you got? Uh, I have Elvis juice. Elvis juice. I gotta tell you, I'm lying. I can't lie. I'm not drinking tequila. I can't drink tequila, so this is just orange juice. Wow. I can't. They told That's me not... to lie. They told me to just just pretend, but I can't. There's no point in pretending. Show's over. But well, I'm getting vitamin C and sugar. If we're, if we're graduating to hard liquor, this whole segment could go in, go south in a hurry. That's what I want. If by south you mean north in a hurry, then that's where we're going. All right, Sam, we got numbers. I asked you for not something different, but something more specific for this weekend to help me make decisions over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And I'm going to use the PFF app to do this, of course. So let's get PFF'd up. Fine, give me some tequila. Give me a shot of tequila. Go ahead, Marissa. The first number is 90. Oh, there was a gasp, an audible gasp in the studio. 90% uh, chance that I will throw up the shot of tequila on live television. What else is 90%? 90, 90 is the number of pressures that Nick Bosa has this season. Leads the NFL. He had 13 against the Seahawks in two games. Seattle needs to figure out a way of slowing down Nick Bosa if they have any shot at this game. He is on a kind of defensive player of the year game wrecking kind of run right now. He's the best defensive player in the National Football League. He led the league with 18 and a half sacks. Three of those games in uh, his two games, by the way, against Seattle. So tough time for Gino and company. I don't know if the magic ends. Uh, okay, the next number is 1.6. I'm going to tell you again because I'm honest. I cheated. I saw the number ahead of time for the first time all year. Um, and I'm going to tell you a fact about this. A sloth, for them to travel a distance of 1.6 kilometers, it can take as long as one entire month. And that fun fact, my friend, is something you would not get anywhere else. Wow, that feels like it would be pretty boring. 1.6%, the turnover-worthy play rate for Justin Herbert this season, which for the second year in a row is the lowest in the NFL. He protects the ball better than anybody else in football, but if he's going to win a playoff game, I think he needs to get a bit more aggressive. And whether that's him, whether that's the scheme, something needs to change, and Herbert needs to be a little bit more, not reckless with the ball, but just a bit more aggressive with it. Oh, I don't know. I, oh, easy on the reckless. I'm okay with that. I was talking to Rayshon Jenkins this whole interview, and, you know, he's a guy who has game-changing plays. That strip sack last week, he, he told me that he visualizes it. And I'm like, like, Brian Dawkins, like, you go out there and talk to the ball before the game. Like, what are you talking about? And he says he really believes in manifestation. It's something he thinks about and takes time to do pretty much every day. So he's so he's a game-breaker. I'm a little worried that something's going to happen if that recklessness happens. And the Jags defense, fourth-best turnover rate in the NFL this year. They got a bit of a knack, some magic for creating that. And that's something that Herbert's going to have to worry about in his first First taste ever of playoff action. All right, the next number is 30. I have no idea. I wish I was 30. I'll leave it there. Miami's rank in EPA per play when they have Teddy and Skylar Thompson at the, at the quarterback position. That drops from number two. They're right up there with Kansas City when Tua is the quarterback this season. But as soon as they go to anybody else at quarterback, that offense just is not the same. And unfortunately, it feels tough to find any way where this offense is going to cook this week against Buffalo. Mm, okay, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to uh, give some little positivity here. The one thing I would say that might give the Dolphins a chance is the run game. Hear me out, Sam. Raheem Mostert okay. had 17 carries for 136 yards in that game in Buffalo a couple of weeks ago. His status <laughs> is up in the air, though. He's got a bit of a thumb injury. You don't need your thumb to run. So, ipso facto, what so have you? Let's get it going. All right, number 108. Um, no idea. What do you got? 
Number of explosive pass plays that the Minnesota Vikings have had this season, which is third in the NFL. That's what that offense has been built on. That's why they're never out of any game, even if they're 33 points down at the half. They can have a ton of big plays from Kirk Cousins to Justin Jefferson. It did damage the last time they played the Giants. That's what still needs to cook this week if they're going to win. Explosive play. I mean, I got, listen, Gronk came on my show and said Giants upset. Lot Hamilton is saying Daniel Jones looks good. Kenny Galladay. Brandon Marshall saying Kenny Galladay might feel himself confidence as a thing and carry it over up against the 30 worst pass defense. The Vikings, they're dealing with some injuries on the O-line, Leonard Williams, mm. Kayvon Thibodeau, they might be getting some pressure and they might be the key to keeping Minnesota from hitting those big plays that you're talking about downfield. Okay, the number one, that's easy. The number one is the shots of tequila that I've taken. I'm not even kidding, since I was 15. I had a bad experience at a Loyola University party in, in Lincoln Park and I'm doing this, Marissa, I hate you. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Birthday. Uh, this segment end, might end right here. One is the number of sacks that Ronnie Stanley has given up this season since coming back from that massive ankle injury <laughs> for Baltimore. Um, the sack came against Cincinnati, though. So if Ronnie Stanley can't hold up, if that offensive line can't hold up generally, I think that whole Baltimore attack is, is in major trouble. The Bengals rank 29th in the NFL in sacks this season, Sam. They do have the lowest passer rating against in the entire league. So it'll probably make things super tough for Huntley or Anthony Brown or whoever we see at quarterback for the Ravens. Okay, last one, the number 23. I don't know. That is, that's Dak Prescott's PFF passing grade rank so far this season. That's below guys like Daniel Jones. It's below Mac Jones. Really? It's not in a good place. And Dallas is going to need Dak Prescott to actually show up and carry this offense, which has the playmakers to, to make hay in the postseason. If they don't, and if it becomes a lackluster Dak Prescott and Dallas offense against Tom Brady in the postseason, I, I think we've seen that script before. What's my PFF passing rank? Where would you put me if I have two well, more shots of tequila? Two more. I mean, you, you were going to be right up there with just the one, Southpaw. two more. Two up, Kellen Moore. Just saying. Yeah. Right up there. All pro levels. Uh, 90 plus. No, you're so nice, Sam. No, no, it's not going to be easy. The point is what you're saying. I, lower than Mac Jones and Daniel Jones, not good. And the Bucks have the ninth ranked pass defense in the NFL this season. Not many people picking the Cowboys. And I wonder, let's just give a little cheer. Sean Payton, I bet you're also, you know, interested in these numbers as you, I'm sure, you know, maybe you're interested in a potential job in Dallas if this all works out uh, and the Cowboys get bounced. I happen to think that that might be something that happens. Sam, we can catch all of your work over at PFF, PFF.com and the new PFF app. When do we stop calling it the new PFF app? Mm, until we have a until we have a new one, I guess. Okay. So all the time. Okay. It's always new until there's a new one. Okay, we appreciate you. We'll be back. We got some K makers. I'm six for six. Are we nervous about this? No, we're going to the end zone. We got three more players who will score touchdowns on Super Wild Card Weekend. <laughs> You're the Dolphins. You're walking in there. How difficult is it to play in that building? Your experience as a visitor when you have that playoff atmosphere going and then add on what's going on with that team this year. Bill's Mafia is one of the best crowds in the NFL and the best fan base in the NFL. So uh, I know it's going to be a tough place to play and I know they're going to be ready there to bring the juice. Ooh, Dolphins. That feels like the Dolphins have a chance. I try to say Raheem Mostert. Why not? He had a good game, a good outing last time that they played. Uh, and it might just come down to him, of course, to what rolled out from this one early. Lamar Jackson, unlikely uphill battle, came out with his own statement uh, just last night on Twitter uh, saying, I wish I was out there. I've got a PCL strain grade two, borderline grade three, and he won't be able to be there for his Ravens up against the Bengals for round three. Um, it's Marissa's birthday. Marissa, we got you cupcakes. Did you open them? Are they good? We'll have to look. Let's see. We have cupcakes, and I also got you this. And I have this, and Will, 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 come here. Well, no, Will, we don't need the jib. Come here, Will. Will, which hat do you want? I have, come here. We have these Up and Adams hats. Look how cool these are. I'm dead. I think they're so great. Which one, hold on, this one, this one's from Marissa. I give this to Marissa. And then we have an, everybody in the control room also. I have an orange one. I have a black one. Which one do you want? This is Will. This is our amazing jib operator, Will, everyone. And we all know Marissa. It's both of their birthdays. Um, just take these. Yeah, pick them out. 
So, okay, Conrad's saying get Will a shot. I don't know the HR regulations on this, so I'm removing myself from the situation. But happy birthday to you guys. Uh, and I don't know what we're going to even do with this. Maybe they'll make it to our show in Arizona. Should I put one on? Yeah. I don't think I'm going to have to do the orange one. Um, but these are also good luck hats. I don't know if anybody knows this, but they are. Uh, and, oh, my God, I'm obsessed. <laughs> obsessed with that. Oh, it's so good. I don't know what we're going to do with these, but I have I'm, I'm a, quite a few of them. Uh, anybody back there in the control room want a hat? Oh, you do? Conrad, are you freaking out that I'm just spiraling and doing whatever I want on the show today? Or were you just, or were you telling me that I should be taking shots of tequila, so now you're dealing with the, that? that. Um, these were made by uh, the, uh, Wisconsin Knitwear. So incredible. Like, sewn one by one on is it on a, like a spool machine thing i don't know the inner workings but i'll post about it of course but how cool are these i love these i'm these the best up in adam's hats everybody it's all happening all right and these also as i said have good luck in them for k makers let's do it are we seeing the results from last week are we seeing them we don't oh conrad why are you trying to steal my shine you knew i got three for three last week and you didn't even want to give me love for it Gosh, oh yeah, I'm six for six and you didn't want to put that on a full screen. Give me some love. I don't know, add some credibility to our program once in a while. Whew. Damn the torpedoes is right. All right, here we go. Uh, let's get to it, guys. Let's get to some of these K-makers and let's hit it with Christian McCaffrey. I'm doing it again. You need a guy to score and I've got you covered. And I think him against the Seahawks, if you look at it, he just scores touchdowns. He has six in six games. Kind of a gimme, but that's okay. Uh, and he makes it seven. Seattle has the 30th ranked run defense. T. Higgins at Ravens. T had quite a game last week against Baltimore. He scored in four of his last five games. You know the Ravens are going to be king in on Jamar. And good luck, Marlon Humphrey, on that. Uh, I think we see T get at least one on Sunday night. And then, last but not least, for your Super Wild Card weekend, K making touchdown scoring pleasure, Devin Singletary against the Dolphins. I think this one is going to get ugly, and the Bills lean on their ground game a lot as a result. Five of Devin's six touchdowns this year have come over the second half of the season. He's in fuego, and there you have it. I love this hat. Christian McCaffrey, T. Higgins, Devin Singletary. Am I wearing the orange one because of the Bengals? I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't have a purple one. It's weird. Uh, okay. We will take a break here, and we'll be back with our final thoughts. We appreciate Brandon Marshall for coming. He was only on our show for 32 minutes. That's why we have nothing to do, because we don't even plan anything anymore when he comes on. Everyday wins make your day so much better. That's why FanDuel Casino has a daily free-to-play game. Reward Machine is a free game that gives players the chance to win up to $2,000 in casino bonus every day. FanDuel's Reward Machine has already given away over $10 million casual in prizes and is over 250,000 winners. To get in on the action, all you have to do is log in daily and spin for a free chance at rewards. FanDuel wants you to win. Play Reward Machine for a free chance at Everyday Wins. <gasps> Only on FanDuel Casino. My producer's talking about shrooms at a wedding. That's an interesting cold open. If you could just absolve me of any accountability, that is the, the sort of world I want to live in. <laughs> oh, just let me out here. Levels on levels on levels. Appreciate you for having me on. Like, finally. Oh, you said up. you were, like, looking for me. I was just like, I'm just waiting for the call. I'm awesome, and I'm going to do what I want, and you have to follow what I, my lead out there, and I'm just going to free ball it the whole time. No! No! Don't say it! What? Is free ball appropriate? I'm sorry. <laughs> You don't really no, know don't. what it is, so it's all yeah. right. It's just like a little clue. <laughs> what did you say? You're going to go play rock band? Listen, I'm about to go play rock band. I'm looking at my drum set right now. I'm not a jumper. Like, I like to stay on the ground. I'm a running back. So, um, yeah, we're going to give Swifty a red card for not being so swift here. Pat took care of the boys, man. You know, while confetti and all that was going on. And then right to the PJ, right home. The t-shirt, you're like this. <laughs> you just want to make sure everybody sings. <laughs> we talk for the clothes. Whoa! Let's go, baby. Gronk, you're such a liability. You gotta stop putting me by on there. No, no, no. I am not going fair for it. I tuned in and you were talking about feet, and I was like, yo, I, I tuned in at the wrong second. Yeah, it's, it's about field goals. It's not it's not the Rex Ryan style feet. Current head coach of the Rancho Bernardo Mustangs, Eric Weddle. Eric. Mustangs. Broncos? <laughs> Broncos. I knew it was Broncos. <laughs> I said it was Broncos. No, 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 no. I hate LA. I hate LA. I said it. We got to go. Love you, Paul Bersey. Check out the tour dates, paulbersey.com. We love you. Good Come luck. Congratulations. New York.
I'm okay. going to go back to New York. He's supposed to come in studio, doesn't, pulls over to the side of the road and is on the phone. Uh, Hamilton, I like that we do the Week in Review, and we didn't always do it, but it's really nice retrospect on how incredible our show is. And I'm so grateful for all of these moments. It's really amazing. We had great guests. And it's not to the tequila talking, I swear. <laughs> it really is. This was a great week. A lot of fun. I love, um, what was it? Uh, if you, if I could be absolved of all responsibility, accountability. Um, that would be a perfect world. But accountability, yeah, that that uh, that pretty much sums it up. I the, feel like the shoe fits. The shoe fits. The yeah. hat fits me. Unfortunately, I was I would send this to New York, but it's regulation huh. size, and with this whatever's raccoon is growing on top of your head, I just don't think it would cover it. So okay, mean, mean drinker. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are the chances? This is why you don't have tequila. What are yeah. the chances you think I end up at that uh, molecular gastronomy restaurant later, later tonight? What do you think uh, the chances are? Zero point zero. Yeah, zero point zero. Yeah. I'll be at the. Just the, make sure you order the scallops if you if you the do. The scallops. Um, oh man. Always a good decision. It was an inside joke with me and Hamilton that I was my you know, <laughs> reckless spending. Uh, okay, you have a Jags sweatshirt on. We know you are a. I do. Just a real, true, diehard fan. You and, you know, what is his name? Jackson DeVille? Cruella DeVille over Jackson there. Jackson DeVille, In yeah. the thong, they sing in the thong song. Shout out Cisco. Okay, you think they're going to win. Anything else you'd like to say before we uh, hand it over to Marissa here for her birthday? Any, like, wild card weekend thing? Any wild card weekend Giants? thing? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, we talked Giants yesterday. I do think the Giants have a good shot at pulling off the upset uh, in Minnesota. Um, I just can't wait. I mean, I'm, I'm excited that we're at this point in the season, and uh, playoff time is the best time of year, and I don't really want to take up too much time away from Marissa's birthday. It's you know, true. She does such an incredible job Can we get show. a triple box, uh, Derek? Yeah, can we get a triple box? Take the I just double. want to say, Marissa... Marissa is the heart and soul of the program. She's responsible for Thanks, basically Hamilton. every little thing that you see on the show from producing segments to cry. those packages that get put together. And now Conrad's getting mad at me. No, you know, we love you. Happy birthday, yeah. Marissa. Well said.